like I'm switching up the tempo myself on how I'm performing these pads versus letting the sample tell me how to perform my tempo. Welcome back and thank you for tuning in for today's video. Today, we're gonna to be chopping up a record and I wanna go through on some tools that I've been using when it comes down to sampling. Uh, I've done many videos on sampling in the MPC, but I'm gonna to continue to do more videos on chopping up records because this is what makes this art so fun, that there's so many ways to chop up a record. And for me, that's what makes this so interesting. But there's two specific topics that I wanna go over today. And one of them is gonna be chopping up your record and matching it to the tempo of your session. And then also using the audio tail length on the new update that they just released on the MPCs. Uh, this update has been awesome, uh, especially for me coming from an older MPC. And real quick, uh, if you guys come from an older MPC or an older sampler, let us know down in the comments what is the machine you come from uh, before you jumped into these newer MPCs? Uh, for me, at least, I come from the 2000XL and uh, getting these small minor updates like the audio tail length on the MPCs, it makes it so, so much more fun and everything comes out so quicker. All right, so let's jump right into it. All right, so right here, I have a session at 75 beats per minute. I have a drum break playing in the background. I'll let you guys hear it. So it's rolling for two bars at 75 beats per minute. Uh, in this session, I'm going to start with my drums and I have not chopped up my sample just yet. I'm gonna go into my sample editor. I actually have a sample that I loaded up right here on the MPC. And on this sample, I'm actually gonna chop it up into two sections. I got the intro that I wanna work with and then right after the intro, it drops into a section with some flutes and I wanna chop that on a separate program. So what we're gonna do right now, uh, we're gonna focus on the intro of this song. Uh, but before I start chopping this up, I do want to let you guys know there's two ways when it comes down to working with samples and loops and all that stuff. Some of you guys might just be sampling into your MPC and looping it. Now, if you guys are just trying to get a four bar loop, loop that up, put it in a sequence and work with that, then yes, you need to get a specific beat per minute and figure out the tempo of that loop. But in this case, I'm gonna chop it up. So trying to figure out the BPM of this loop is not going to be so important. I am gonna try to get the ballpark of what's the BPM of this, but it's not gonna be perfect and I don't really care if it's perfect or not. So right now as I'm chopping it up, I'm gonna explain why it's not really gonna be as important for me to figure out the exact tempo of this loop. So let's go ahead and hear the beginning of this. That's it right there. Cool, I'm gonna just grab that uh, beginning uh, intro of this and right here, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna get a perfect loop. I'm gonna just kind of get that section. I'm gonna hit process and I'm gonna extract that from the long uh, sample that I have. I'm gonna make this into its own little small sample. I'm gonna name this uh, loop one. You guys can name this whatever you want, but make sure you're naming your samples because if you have all these files and you don't know what the name of it is, it could be very confusing and frustrating. So in this section, I'm just gonna name it loop one, hit do it, extract it, and then let's get the other section that I wanna work with, which is gonna be right here. Right there. And hit process, extract, let's name this loop two and now hit do it so now if we have loop one loop two and then we have this entire song which is is a very long song uh, if you double click on the name of this file you're gonna have all your files right here and this is my long sample this is my loop one that we extracted and my loop two that we extracted let's start with loop one i'm gonna go here i want to make sure i get a, a perfect tight loop <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't really care about it being a perfect loop. I just want to get the downbeat straight and make sure I have a downbeat hit process. Let's uh, discard that beginning. I'm not going to set a perfect loop. I'm actually going to start slicing this up the way we've always done it. If you guys have not seen other videos, make sure you guys check it out. I'll leave some links up here. Uh, I'm gonna go from trim mode to chop mode. And on chop mode, I'm gonna start manually chopping this up. Mm -hmm. 
So once I created my slices, uh, this is another reason why I like to have a drum break or some type of drums already playing on the background or in my sequence because as I'm doing these slices right now, I'm gonna hit play and hear that drum break that I have already added, which is at 75 beats per minute. And I can go ahead and play with these chops just to make sure I like what I did in regards of me chopping this up. All right, this is cool. I like this. As you guys can hear, it is definitely not on tempo, which is okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a program. Uh, really quick, before I convert this into a program, I want to let you guys know, I'm okay with this not being in tempo as I'm going to convert it because, again, I'm not doing a perfect loop and I'm not going to loop this on my sequence. If I was, then I, I would want to make sure this is matching the BPM, but we're going to go ahead and create our own sequence. So, so I'm going to go ahead and hit shift and convert. Now, right here, this is actually a question I've been getting asked a lot on my Instagram. Um, you know, you guys create your, your sample chops. Uh, when you guys create these sample chops into a new program, make sure you guys are using these settings right here, new program, using slices, hit do it. Once you hit do it, it created a program for you already. But the program that it created, it's going to be labeled loop one. So if we go back to our main page, uh, track one is our drums. Track two, we're going to put our sample. So I'm going to actually name this sample. And our program, we are not on the new uh, program that we created. We got to make sure you hop over to loop one. So the tempo of my session is a little slower. Uh, it, if you guys want to match the drum break, what I can do and what I would do is I would first get the tempo of these chops and the way I would do that, I would use this tap tempo and I would just tap each uh, section as I'm doing the tap tempo. It's about 80 beats per minute. So let's go to 80 beats per minute. Cool. Now my drum break, since it's an actual drum break, it's, it's not going to be at 80 beats per minute. That drum break was at 75 beats per minute. What I can do here is go into my menu and uh, sample editor or our program editor, go into the sample section and on this drum break, which is right here, turn on warp. Now, when I turn on warp, I got to remember that this drum break originally was at 75 beats per minute. So I put 75, hit do it. The reason why you got to make sure you're matching this BPM section when you turn on the warp function is because it's going to lock it up the original tempo. So now that I go to back to my main page and I, you know, go up to 90 beats per minute or go down to 70 beats per minute, it's going to time stretch this or I'm sorry, uh, it's going to warp this either up or down doing the best to keep the timing correct. Now, I do say doing the best because this thing will work if I'm pitching it up. But when I pitch it down too much, I feel like 10 uh, beats per minute lower is the maximum I can go. Anything lower than that, it starts to sound a little funky and I don't like the sound of it. But in this case, we're going up. So originally, those drums were at 75 beats per minute, but I'm going to push it up to 80. There you go. Now it's sped up a bit. Now that I'm up at 80, I'll go back to my sample chops and let's see how this sounds, if it uh, matches a little better. There you go. That is awesome. Now it's actually matching together. Now, as you guys can hear, I don't know if you guys noticed, but on some of the chops, I'm probably not perfect with my slices. I could go back and perfect those slices, but I can also do what they've added on this new uh, update, which is using the audio sample tail length. Jeez, I don't even know if I said it right, but uh, this uh, tail length. So the way we're going to do that and, and why we're going to use this is because I'm sure you guys have ran into this situation before where you do your slices and you're performing your slices, but there's minor millisecond gaps in between one pad to the next pad. And those minor gaps sometimes could sound cool, but most of the times they might sound a little cheesy and like it's just not really clicking. So in order for us to get rid of those minor gaps in between each pad, we can hop over to menu and sample editor. And right here, if you guys are on the MPC one, you go to your program editor,
editor. Once you're on your program editor, go into samples. So when I'm going from this pad to this pad, there's like a little small gap. I don't know if you guys can hear it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on this little droplet icon and I'm going to go from current to all. Once I'm on all, I can go ahead and go to this sample tail and I'm going to engage this. I'm going to go into 100 milliseconds or maybe 200 milliseconds. You guys are going to want to play with this and whatever feels right, stick with that. Right now, I'm going to start at 200 milliseconds. It might sound good to me and it's going to affect and add a small sample tail um, to all of your pads. So as you guys can hear, I don't know if you guys kind of heard it decaying a bit. If I'm going to go drastic, obviously you don't want to go that drastic. I'm going to start with like 200 milliseconds. So let's see how that sounds. That's awesome. That is so cool. Like uh, again, I'm coming from an older MPC workflow that this right here this is crazy. Like I appreciate these small updates um, just probably because I come from these older machines, but now you're actually not going to notice those minor gaps in between each chop. Now that you've done that, make sure before we exit out of this, uh, one of you guys actually did mention it in a comment on a previous video. Uh, thank you for mentioning this, but make sure you go back to that little droplet icon, which is now a bunch of pads, go from all, go back to current and hit close because if you keep it in all, if you do one little switch up to one of these pads, it might affect the whole program and you don't want that. It, it could be a big mess. Now that you guys did that, go back to main and now you can play around with the sequence and really start having fun and creating your own uh, melody with those chops that you've just created. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not working with loops. When I sample into the MPC, I'm chopping up my uh, my loops into quarter notes and I'm rearranging them in my sequence and creating something different. So that's why for me, when it comes down to matching the tempo, I kind of go and, and do my best to match it, but I'm not perfectly on time with the tempo of the sample with, the, you know, I don't really care as much. I'm just kind of having fun with the chops. And right here, I can go ahead and play these chops faster. So it's, like I'm switching up the tempo myself on how I'm performing these pads versus letting the sample tell me how to perform my tempo. Cool. Now I'm going to do what we just learned, but I'm going to just kind of do it on my own way. I'm going to speed through it just so you guys can see how I will do it on a regular basis. Now, these videos, I do kind of elongate them and I'm explaining as I go. But in reality, once you get the hang of this, it's going to be very fast and it just takes a few seconds. Go back to my sample. Now I'm going to go to loop two. it go to channel two I'll make the sample two go to loop two so as you guys see I'm kind of going through this and um, it's taking me a few seconds to actually get this uh, tined up the way I, we were just explaining. Then you guys kind of have some put together. Obviously, this is something I did right here for the sake of this video, but let's see how it came out. So as you guys hear, I'm playing this or I'm performing this, but 
there is no gaps in between each chop, which sometimes, at least for me, when I was on the 2000 XL, when I had those gaps or those chops in between each slice, it would annoy me because it would not sound as cool as other producers would do it. And it could be creative, but you just really have to know how you're going to do those chops. In this case, this is a game changer. This is awesome. I've been really enjoying these small tools that have been given to us. And yeah, guys, if you guys got something out of this video, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions and also if you guys enjoyed this video made it to the end make sure you guys hit the thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already again thank you so much for tuning in i'll catch y'all on our next video peace